Today, I run a seven-figure blog at adamandfrey.com and a seven-figure YouTube channel. So overall, I have a CEO, a head of sales, video editors, content managers, blog coaches, support. It's not just me, but right now it's a team of 12 people. So how do we run the day-to-day -day operations? What are the exact tools and software that we use to run a large blog, a YouTube channel, basically a large content-driven information business? So in this video, I'm going to cover every single tool I use, including the exact tools I use to create these videos, short videos, my blog posts, sales funnels, and everything else. But before we get started, I want to invite you to watch my free masterclass covers how I make $300,000 a month with my online business. Make sure to click the link in the description below, sign up for that free training, and let's get into the topic for today. So in this video, we're going to cover every single tool that I use. So basically, there's like 23 or 25 different tools in this video. Everything that I use to run my blog, the YouTube channel, the sales funnels, all that stuff. And then at the end, I'll tell you exactly what you need to get started if you're just starting out and all the free tools that you can get started with. And then, you know, this is like how you run basically a seven-figure business. So we're first, we're going to start with my blog. So when we think about the blog, what do you need to run an actual website? Well, we're going to start with the easy stuff first. So first, I use Google Sheets and Google Docs really to plan all of my content. So you can see here, this is my Google Sheet, and this is a master you know, content sheet that I use with uh, my writer. So I kind of plan, do the keyword research and write titles here. And then, you know, I get the, uh, these pieces of content written and that's just Google Docs. So there's simple ways as a blogger to get Google Docs imported into WordPress, all the images, all of that stuff. But really it's as simple as using Google Sheets and to plan your content, Google Docs to write the articles. And then look at, there's even this surfer integration for on-page SEO that tells you exactly what you need to put into the article. So you can use surfers Chrome extension and you know Google Docs integration to just perfectly write these articles within Google Docs. So the first two are basically Google Sheets and Google Docs. Another interesting one that you can use uh, that you should use for team communication is Slack. So even if you have just one writer that you're working with or one link building assistant, one person, like Slack is the best way to send messages. You can set up a free account and it's really the best way to organize and structure your messaging. Like right now we have like a bunch of different channels and everyone can communicate in there. But even if you're starting just one person, Slack, everyone uses it. It's definitely the best uh, online collaboration software and messaging tool to use. Another one is Loom. So if I wanted to create any type of video answer to somebody, so let's say you're hiring a writer or a link building assistant or anybody on your team that you want to work with, Loom is the best way to send quick videos to people to really get a better answer. So we're living in this video world now. And instead of just typing something back, Loom is the best way to share information and send it. So there's a Chrome extension for Loom where you can just click the video here. You can start a screen share, you start recording, and then everything that you say, you can even have your your picture on here so I can do screen and camera. So it's gonna come from my webcam, which is up here technically, but um, you can use Loom to send videos and then you just send a quick link and they can just view the video uh, within Slack or any other communication channel. Next one is QuickBooks. So if you're running an online business and you're making any amount of money, you need to use QuickBooks. So basically you have a business bank account or even if you just have a, uh, a sole proprietorship and you're getting everything through your personal account, make sure you pay your taxes, you need to track everything. You can do that by syncing your uh, checking account or your credit cards into QuickBooks. So I still use it. I think it's, it's really what uh, my accounting team uses. We can look at my profit and loss statement at the time of this video recording on July 20th. So far this year, we've made $2.3 million from all these different revenue streams. And we can see that all these different expenses are tracked and categorized accordingly with a net operating income of $1.9 million so far this year. So QuickBooks really gives you all the revenue, profit, loss, and categorizations in one place so that you know how much money you're making, you can file your taxes, definitely get QuickBooks online. So when it comes to like running an online business, we covered what you basically need, Google Sheets, Docs, Slack, Loom, and QuickBooks. That's pretty much what you can use to run any type of online business. You can talk to people, do things, figure out revenue, all of that. But let's get into blogging. So I have another video on the exact WordPress tech stack to use when you start a blog. So when we're starting a blog, we're creating a website. So what do we actually use? Well, we're using WordPress, and then we need web hosting to store our files. I always recommend WPX hosting is they're the best support and hosting provider. Some people ask me like, what's the difference between Bluehost and WPX? Well, it's kind of like, think about buying a storage unit. Bluehost is kind of like one where there's 10,000 other storage units. There's not that great security. And it takes, you know, two days to get back to you when you have a question on your storage unit. Whereas WPX is kind of something like there's a hundred storage units. They're nice, they're clean, they're security. And when you ask somebody and you go to the front desk, they will get back to you right away. That's kind of how I view web hosting. So yes, you can use any number of different web hosts, but how quality you know, do you want it to be? How much are you willing to pay? I recommend WPX as they have the best support. Then we have to talk about your WordPress theme. So that's cadence, which is really easy for bloggers to use. There's lots of cadence blocks to make things interesting and for affiliate posts and make them look good. Then I recommend WP Rocket for site speed, Thirsty Affiliates to cloak and track all your affiliate links in one place, Short Pixel for image optimization. So you can, you know, it condenses and compresses your images down to speed up your site as well. Mammoth Docx Converter, converting all of your 
Google Docs into WordPress format. Then there's also WordFence for security, Rank Math, which is good for just your SEO as far as you know your meta descriptions and tags and things like that. And then we have Spectra, which I really like, which used to be called uh, Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, and that gives you a lot of different like layouts and affiliate blocks and different things to make your content look good. So that's basically your WordPress tech stack. I have another video linked here that goes over that in a lot more detail. After that, we have to talk about what are you using for your blog on a day-to-day -day basis and an ongoing basis? So first, I recommend Ahrefs. So Ahrefs is the best tool for keyword research. So I use Ahrefs for specifically keyword research, so finding new keyword opportunities, tracking my link building efforts, tracking my rankings. So those are the three main ways I do it. So I can see like right here in organic traffic, I can view my website and it'll load and it'll tell me these are the articles that are ranking well for me. This is their position. This is the keywords they're ranking for and all that. So you can really track your website. You can also view, you know, the uh, referring domain. So different websites that are linking to you and new ones and what, you know, what websites are new and linking to you. You know, there's a new one here from Bing that I wasn't aware of. I don't know if that's real or not. Not really, but <laughs> you can see a lot of different articles here and links. And then you use their Keyword Explorer to find opportunities like best. And I can just put in software. I can use the matching terms tool and I can see all the different types of software to write about antivirus, video editing, tax, try to find opportunities based on low difficulty scores. But really Ahrefs is the first like investment you would make in your blog. Do you need it? No, you can do a, you know, one month or just do a seven day trial that they used to have for, you know, pay a little bit or just do one month, do all your keyword research and then cancel. But Ahrefs is the best SEO tool. It's a reason that everybody uses it. It's really, you don't, you can't use a Google keyword planner. You can't really use like Uber Suggest or these others are not as good as Ahrefs. It's just that simple. So that's kind of the first tool you would use to create your content plan and start doing your keyword research. And now a word from our sponsors. Are you sick of your competitors outranking you in the search results? Do you wish there was an easier way to get more Google traffic? So one option is to get, you know, a costly agent with an ongoing retainer. The other way is to leverage a tool that tells you what to actually do. So this solution is Ahrefs Webmaster Tools, and it's free. So this isn't one of those 14-day free trial offers. Instead, it's a super powerful tool that'll do a full website audit for you and keep working for you for free. It'll scan your site and prioritize precisely what you need to fix to improve your search results. So imagine how valuable you'll become as you discover these changes and increase your traffic. So isn't it time you get Google to start working for your business? So visit ahrefs.com webmaster tools for this free tool. You can find the link below in the YouTube description. Again, that's ahrefs.com, A-H-R-E-F-S.com slash webmaster dash tools. And by checking out our sponsors, you are supporting this YouTube channel. Next is Surfer SEO. So we saw that they had a Google Docs integration, but Surfer is the tool you use for on-page SEO. So that tells you exactly how many times you need to use keywords, put them, how many you know, keywords to put in your articles, all the semantically related keywords, headings, and all of that. So you can see I put in affiliate links, an article on affiliate links, and it tells me all the different keywords I need to add into the article and how many times to add them. So it needs things like high paying affiliate programs, promote products, start affiliate marketing, and all these variations. So when you write your content, you get it and optimize it perfectly for search engines and uh, robots, basically. And then you know that it's, you know, it's a quality article, you get the scores high, and then you can publish it faster. So next on my list is Grammarly. Grammarly is a great grammar checker tool. It checks spelling, punctuation, all of those different things and it gives you a overall score for your content and then you can find and fix all these different issues with your article so like red lines are basically spelling mistakes this one's already been run through Grammarly, but you can see there's, you know, you can remove phrases. It tells you exactly what to do to make it a more readable article, and then it gives you a score. So really, when you're using a you surfer to write your article, make sure to check it with Grammarly so there's no spelling or punctuation mistakes or anything like that. You know, you might actually improve your writing with Grammarly, find that you do a lot of passive voice or these different things that aren't that good. So over time, you start to develop better writing. But Grammarly has a free account, and you should sign up and use it. So next on my list for blogging is actually getting images. So when you want to get images for your blog, whether it's stock photography, different types of of images, where do you go? Well, I currently use Adobe Stock as they have really high quality images. I pay for 10 images a month and then you pay $2.99 an image after that. But you know, they have a lot of different stuff you can use. There's also a couple other sites like Pexels is a good one that you can use free stock photography. There's also Unsplash. Unsplash is a really good one as well. So they give you a lot of free uh, usable images for the web. So if you're looking for images, definitely use that. And then you can choose how do you want to edit them. So for featured images, in my in my course, we cover exactly how to do it with like Canva for free if you want or Photoshop. But really, you would use Photoshop if you want to like edit these images, or you can just use something like Canva to take a stock image and then maybe you add some text to it and change the colors a little bit, make it a featured image for your blog post. But there's different ways to do that. And you can use Photoshop or Canva, and then you can either use Unsplash, Pexels for free, or Adobe Stock to get your stock photography. So that pretty much covers the 
blog, let's move into creating sales funnels. So when you get people to your blog, yes, we can make money with affiliate marketing and we teach that, but what if we wanna create a sales funnel and start collecting email addresses and sell our own product? What do I use? What would I recommend for that? Well, first of all, there's email marketing. And for that, I use ConvertKit still. Uh, I have over 80,800 people in the email list at the time of this recording. We're getting about 150 to 300 people a day into the email list. That's primarily through YouTube, through the blog, through social media and different channels. But really ConvertKit is a great tool because you can send uh, you can view your subscribers, you can send broadcast emails, so one-time emails, sequences, so once they sign in or log, uh, you know, put their email address in, you can send them a, a, like a weekly uh, seven-day email sequence, send them a lot of information in an automated way, and you can do all these different things with ConvertKit, so it's really good uh, for email marketing. Another good one is ConvertBox. So ConvertKit is starting to have some of these features, but also ConvertBox we use to create exit intent pop-ups on the blog. So when you know, somebody's about to leave the blog, you can pop up an exit intent pop up and then they can say, you know, sign up, to put your email in and you get your lead magnet. So this is the best way to get uh, email signups for your blog. You can see that we have like webinar opt-ins. So we have different uh, entrance intent, exit intent pop ups with this for people to, you know, come into the our own sales funnel. But then we also have like exit intent based on different articles. So you can do it on a page by page basis and say, in best LLC services, I want Taylor brands to show up or in SEO tools, I want SE ranking to show up. And that shows them and you can push affiliate links there with exit intent as well. So you can really organize it simply by, you know, changing when you display it. So it shows it only on this exact URL, best LLC services, and it shows it, you know, specifically. So you can really do a lot of different things with exit intent. You can push people to your own products with lead magnets. You can also push people to affiliate products based on the article. Sometimes if someone is searching for a best LLC service, they're probably not interested in starting a blog anyway. So I can just push them to an affiliate link instead. So ConvertBox is good for exit intent pop-ups, which is really a great lead capture source for your blog. Next on the list is Deadline Funnel. And Deadline Funnel is an interesting one because you can, once somebody signs up for your email list, you can put them on a deadline timer and then you can put it like a week or two weeks whatever you think but you can create specific discounts with deadline funnel which is great for your sales funnel another one is webflow so we use webflow for our uh, pages like blog growth engines masterclass bloggrowthengine.com also uses webflow webflow is a really good page builder um like cms basically and it's it's different i think you know when you think about blogging wordpress is best when you think about like sales pages webflow is definitely best it's easy to lay out we have all of our testimonials on here what blog growth engine is the curriculum all the phases of the course all of these different things and this is a webflow page so when it comes to creating your own course and sales funnel and all of that how do you actually get people to pay well you can use a tool like thrivecart which is a great you know checkout Soft piece of software. And it's really great because it's only a one-time fee. You pay once and then you have it for life and you can create checkout pages, multiple versions of checkout pages, all these different things. You can add testimonials on the side, what they get. It's a really clean and simple layout where people can enter their credit card information and check out. So it's a great checkout page builder. And then with that, you can use Stripe and PayPal. So you, you set up a PayPal account, you hook it with Thrivecart, you set up a Stripe account and hook it with Thrivecart so that you can uh, collect credit cards and PayPal uh, email addresses and all that and sell products through Thrivecart basically for free after that one-time fee. So that's what we currently use. So next is if you're looking to sell information and become an educator and teacher and sell stuff online through your sales funnels, you need an online course platform. And for that, we use Thinkific. So Think you know, in our Thinkific course, Blog Growth Engine, you can see all the different phases of our course. We just added a new one on monetizing your skills with services. So how do you sell consulting? You can see it's a really nice layout. Students can see it. They can view these different videos. There's slideshow presentations. You can add links below your video content. So things like PDFs and downloads and checklists and spreadsheets. But Thinkific is a really Really good uh, online course platform that we use to sell online courses. All right, so we've covered what we use for the blog. We've covered sales funnels. Let's talk about YouTube. So YouTube's a different strategy that requires a little bit of different software as well. First one on the list is vidIQ. So vidIQ is kind of like the hrefs of YouTube. Basically, it can do keyword research. You can find video ideas. You can track competitors and all of that stuff. So if you look at keywords, vidIQ is telling you basically do one on how to make money with affiliate marketing. You can click that keyword. You can see the difficulty score, um, the overall score, which is basically how good of an opportunity is it for you and your channel? What's the competition like? What's the search volume and all of that? You can also put in things like I could put in like blogging and I could put in matching terms to much like Ahrefs and it gives me video ideas based on, you know, including the word blogging. So it can be like blogging niches, niches, blogging for beginners, blogging course, and all these different things. So you can view a lot of different stuff with vidIQ. It also integrates with YouTube Studio. So once you start in entering, you know, your titles and thumbnails and uploading stuff, it has little prompts and it can help you with your YouTube SEO as well. Next on my list is Frame. So if you're outsourcing video editing to an editor, Frame is a great tool to use to collaborate in real time with that. So for example, if we look at some of my YouTube videos, we can see all the way back and we can view these different things. And I can see, okay, there is version one 
ton of this WordPress tech stack video, like I mentioned earlier in the video, and there's different notes and things for me, like different, you know, maybe if there's a little uh, error or a weird transition, you can make comments in the timeline. So I actually comment inside the timeline to make things uh, easy for the editor to understand based on that, and then go in and up upload uh, version two. So Frame is a great collaboration tool with video editors if you're not editing everything yourself. Another tool that I think is really cool for YouTube is Pitch. So with Pitch, Pitch is like uh, a PowerPoint presentation type of piece of software, much like Google Slides and all that, but I think it's a lot better. It's more interactive, it looks cooler, you can do a lot with it. So like I've used it a lot for these specific types of videos where I'm trying to explain a concept. So you can see, you know, this was my video on not investing in Bitcoin and you know, a staircase and all this stuff. And you can create all these different interesting things and it has a little bit more interactive elements. And then when I'm doing my screen share and presenting, I can actually use this pitch deck as I'm going through it to create a really engaging video. Now, when it comes to recording the actual YouTube videos, there's lots of different things that you can do. There's different cameras, lenses, setups, and all of that. What I currently use is actually a Sony camera and their remote app. So basically I can go on my computer and I can see myself right here on the screen and I can click record so I don't have to get up, walk over there and hit the record button. So it's connected via USB to my computer and I can actually use this Sony remote app to click record, see myself, see how I look when I'm sitting here so I can actually look down and see what it looks like and all of that and then I hit record. Now that records the video and then I use ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow is the tool that I use to actually record the screen and the microphone. So with ScreenFlow I can record this as an as a audio track and my entire MacBook Pro screen. So that records everything. It records the pitch slides if I'm doing that. It records things as I'm showing it and doing it. And then with my video editor, we use Adobe Premiere to edit the videos. And you know, you can add my head in the bubble in the corner, do all the screenshots, do all of that stuff. And then for short videos, my short video team, we use Adobe Premiere and After Effects mm -hmm. to edit these videos, add all the titles, the little titles, transitions, emojis, and all of that stuff. And then again, I use Google Sheets and Google Docs for things too. Like I, I do my YouTube content calendar, much like my blog content calendar, where it's all in Google Sheets and organized and structured that way. So basically that's all the tools that you need to run a multi seven figure content business on YouTube, blogging, and all of that. When money really isn't a big deal. But what if you're just starting out? What do you actually do? What do I recommend? Well, first, when you're running a blog, you can use things like Google Sheets and Google Docs for free just to kind of organize and structure your content calendar. You can sign up for a free ConvertKit account for email marketing. You could also use Slack for free as well. You can just send messages that way. You can use a free Loom account to send videos to people. And that can also help with some link building and outreach efforts even. You can just send videos. Your videos are like limited to four or five minutes, but you can have a free Loom account. You can have a free Grammarly account. So you can set that up as well to make sure that your blog posts are error free. And then you can get free stock photos from Unsplash and Pexels. You can set up a WordPress site. Yes, you pay for hosting, but you can get a free theme. You can use like Cadence Blocks for free. You can use a lot of different free plugins. You're not paying a ton of money there. Really the first tools that you actually need to run your business would be like Ahrefs and then Surfer SEO. So Surfer SEO really helps you like every single month write your content and know exactly what AI based keywords to add into your content. So that's an ongoing cost. Ahrefs you could pay for one month, do all your keyword research and cancel. Surfer is one that's like $49 a month and you run with. So that is how I would get started. That is how you go from zero basically to 25 pieces of software. But we run, you know, very profitable profitable online business, $300,000 a month. And, you know, software is only maybe 2% of that cost. So it's really, you know, we've tried everything, we've tested everything. If you have any questions on software, please comment below and let me know if there's anything that you, you know, you find difficult or things that you need to do to run your blog or YouTube channel. So I hope that video is interesting to you. If you want to learn more about how I make $300,000 a month, a little bit more behind the scenes, my actual strategies, make sure to click the link below and watch my free masterclass. Thousands of students had gone through it and had lots of aha moments. So make sure to click the link below, sign up for that free training. Please like the video and I will see you in the next one.